Donald Truman, our personal injury lawyer. Um, we were just chatting about the fact that, you know, there are so many laws that regulate our lives and, and taking pictures, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. laws about that, too. Carl will help you to get out of any big snag that you're in. If you've slipped and fallen, if somebody has had medical malpractice against you, if you've had a car accident and you don't know how to deal with it, and you have written a book on the subject of insurance. So that's pretty impressive, Carl. Yeah, as, as I've said before, you know, one of my goals is try to inform the consumer and try to, you know, promote uh, public awareness, you know, rather than, you know, so many, you know, lawyer ads want to just say, well, you know, me, 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 hire me, you know, I, you know, and, and all the ben you know, benefits for them. But, yeah. you know, my goal is to, just like being on this show, is to educate and be able to answer questions because I think a, an informed consumer and the informed public is, uh, you know, helps our society so much better, you mm -hmm. know, because there's so much misinformation out there, you know, especially in the media about what our laws are and, you know, always hearing about, quote, frivolous lawsuits, which is really not true. Uh, there are so many, you know, we talk about laws on the books, you know, there's so many immunities. Uh, it's, it's amazing. There are so many, uh, which I find it, uh, you know, odd and ironic that, you know, some politicians who want to promote, oh, we need less government, we need government out of our lives, actually are the same people promoting more laws, protecting corporations, protecting insurance companies, providing more immunities, per restricting rights of the public and the citizens mm -hmm. to redress their complaints in the courtroom. Yeah, amazing. And Carl, you know, you've got uh, a whole bunch of people who write to you on a regular basis, and we only have a, a few moments to talk about some of the emails that we get. Mm -hmm. But this one is really important, considering that prom is coming up. So we're going to hit you it with this question. Family. My daughter's getting ready to go to prom in a few weeks. She isn't driving yet, but what if whoever's driving her drinks and gets pulled over? Would my daughter get in trouble or just the driver? I know you're a lawyer and not the law, but what do you think? That's from Terry in Floyd's Knobs. Well, uh, believe it or not, well, of course, part of the question that wasn't in there is, is the daughter drinking? Mm -hmm. And, uh, ah. you know, so if she's, first of all, if she's not drinking, she shouldn't, she should not get into a car. Mm -hmm. Well, she, no way she get into a car with someone who's been drinking and, and driving, of course. Exactly. Uh, but it's, <coughs> it's very ironic, this, this question. There's a recent Indiana uh, appellate course that came out overturning, there was a, a prosecutor Actually, there was, a, there was a, a trooper pulled over a car, and the person driving was sober, and there was someone in the back seat who was drunk and passed out in the back seat. Wow. But the driver was sober. You know, we always hear about, you know, designated driver, don't drink the driver. Well, they weren't. The person in the back was, you know, had too much to drink. Mm -hmm. The police officer had pulled the car over for speeding or some other violation, saw this person, and actually arrested the guy in the back seat for public intoxication. <laughs> oh, but how do you do that? It's in it's in the person's personal vehicle. Well, it's vehicle. still but it's still in in the public in a public place. But the the mm -hmm. court of appeals actually overturned that. The, the court convicted him of public intoxication, which I think flies in every common sense that we have mm -hmm. about. Well, you know, you're doing the right thing. You're not driving, you know, you're, someone else is, is taking care of you, but then the policeman actually arrested him for public intoxication, and I think that that was totally wrong, well, yeah. and the Court of Appeals agreed, but the, but the trial court and the prosecutor actually went after him and convicted him. Amazing. Wow. There, there's another whole, the whole slip and fall theory. This is something mm -hmm. that a lot of people are concerned about, and that's why they have to come to an attorney to get some help, because you fall in a public place. Whose responsibility is it? That's what Amy in Louisville wants to know. She says she recently fell at a bar at 4th Street Live because of water on the floor. In the fall, I broke my tailbone, didn't realize it till a few days later when it hurt so bad they had to go to the doctor. I called them to have them cover my doctor's bills and they said they weren't responsible for anything. Sorry. <laughs> if this is a live and learn situation, I guess she's going to have to deal with it. But is there anything Amy in Louisville can do about this particular situation? Well, slip and fall cases are always tough cases mm -hmm. uh, because, well, number one, Kentucky has what's called an open and obvious rule that if something is like if you're on, you know, you see ice out here in the parking lot mm -hmm. and you see it and step on it and fall, well, that's you do have a responsibility for where you're stepping. And if it is something that is clearly open and obvious, then, you know, then, then the jury can consider that in apportioning damages or even you know, the, the judge can um, throw it out completely. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, so there is, there are some tough issues, especially even falling in a, whether in this or bar, you know, of course, one of the questions they're going to, the insurance company will ask, well, had she, you know, she's in a bar, was she drinking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, what, what was it spilled? One of the defenses that we always see, you know, when, whether it's a grocery store that drops something, you know, they always want to say, well, it just happened. We didn't have a chance to respond and clean it up and take care of it, you know, because there is reasonableness on both sides as far as what is the duty and, and what is their obligation. The, uh, it is important to notify someone right away because, you know, if she didn't say anything, two days later she says, I'm hurt, I'm going to call this person, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to call this bar back and say that I slipped there Saturday night. What do they know? suspicious. Yeah. I mean, yeah, how, <laughs> how, how do they establish that it's true or not? You know, even if they want to do the right thing, you know, you've got to notify them right away to document it and fill out an incident report and make sure you get the name of person who you talk to uh, because the other issue that I see is that people do notify the manager but they don't fill out any incident report and then like, days oh, and weeks later about. like oh I don't remember that person sure you know, they never told me anything exactly well you can find out more by checking out trumanlaw.com that's Carl's website you can also dial numbers both in Indiana and in Kentucky mm -hmm. uh, the 502 number is 9686000 in Indiana 812-282-8500 and uh, you're welcome to send your email questions to him and also during these opportunities to call in live even if you can't get through on the phones we'll answer your email questions great thank you thanks right, for being Carl, with us today Carl week. thanks and thanks for true. bringing in new mugs. That's right. Yeah, I <laughs> can't wait to start using those break Carl Truman mugs. Appreciate it. We'll be back with more Louisville Live this morning right after the break.